Fighters, welcome to the show today. I'm excited to dig right in uh, with my, my buddy Tony here. I'm going to introduce him in a minute. He's going to introduce himself. But uh, guys, have you ever been in a situation in your life where you feel like you can't recover from your past mistakes? I know I have. And today's guest has a little bit of a unique story here. And it's pretty common as we put uh, as we found out at our Mile High Profit Summit last September in Denver, uh, we had a gentleman uh, get up and talk about his past and how he can't get past, he's having a hard time getting past his past. And, um, and so Tony here is in, a, in our battleground group and he's um, doing some great things. He's had quite the journey and I just wanted to have him on to tell a little bit of his story for any of you who can't seem to shake the shit off of your past mistakes you've made and consequences you might have to deal with. You know, for example, um, you know, I, in the past, you know, I have a bankruptcy I've talked about and I, and for many, probably a couple of years after that, uh, it just felt like it followed me around, not just the consequences of it, right. But the, the head trash around, I'm a loser and things like that. And, um, and, but this has a little different flavor to it. We're not going to talk about bankruptcy today. Uh, we're going to talk about prison. <laughs> and, um, and, and so you could hear Tony chuckling there. Um, Tony, welcome to the show, man. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> so I don't even know how we got uh, into the DM and in, in Facebook, I think there was a post in the group and you talked about how you spent some time locked up mm -hmm. and then I DM'd you and I was like, you know, dude, I I'm looking at my first message. I'm like, what did you get locked up for? And then you were just totally transparent with me in that DM. And I'm like, through the course of that conversation, I'm like, dude, there's a, there's some people that need to hear this stuff because you've, you've recovered pretty strong. And, um, before we get into that, uh, who are you? Where do you live? What do you do? Give people a little context all right so my name is tony ruffin um i live in the baltimore area uh i'm a gc we I try to remodel uh, we, what well, we do we remodel um bathrooms kitchens basements you know a little bit a little bit of everything um yeah and I'm, I'm i'm working you know programs help a lot man yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, fucking, you're doing the work, man. You, you, every time it, I, I get in there, you're in there, man. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm definitely I'm definitely there. Like, I'm definitely, like, there's just a lot. I realize how much shit I didn't know just by mm -hmm. how much I've learned so far. And there's, like, stuff from when I was in, when I just started the group that I'm, like, I'm just able to start implementing now, man. It's like, that program, two things that you say that always fucking sticks with me are build your brand and pound the fucking rock. And like yeah. every fucking day, pound it, make some way, hit that fucking rock every day, do something to push yourself forward and build your brand, man. S stand behind your fucking product. Do what you're supposed mm -hmm. to be doing. Like back that shit up, talk it and back it up. We interrupt this broadcast for an important message from the TCF team. Today is the last day you can get our Shin Fu sales training course at the launch price of $147. At midnight that price goes up to $247. This offer will not be extended again. Go to the contractorfight.com slash sell before it's too late. How long you been in business? So this is going to be my fourth year. I'm coming on my fourth year right now in business. All right. Your fourth year, you're going to hit a million this year, man? I'm not going to hit a million, but I'm going to hit a million next year. Okay. I'm definitely going to hit a million next year. Yeah. I'm, I, it's like, it's... Like I was saying, man, I just it just by how much I've learned so far, I've mm -hmm. realized how much shit I didn't know. And it just, you know, you want to be further along than you are in life. Like, you're like, I shouldn't fucking still be dealing with this shit. I should be further mm -hmm. away. And I'm like, what the hell? Am, why ain't I further away? You just, it just takes time, man. You just got to have patience. And it, it ain't no fucking, it ain't going to happen in six weeks. You got to, like, mm -hmm. I was so fucked up. I like, I was I, like, I didn't know shit, man. Like. Like I can't, I knew shop class. Look, I, like I came home from prison. I knew shop class. I knew eighth grade shop class, tape measure, and saw regular hand tools. That's it. I didn't That's know it. nothing. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. got a friend of mine, man. He gave me, uh, gave me a job. We was in prison together, but you know, it's it's just we were in prison together. I knew him before prison. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I used to. 
I, I used to sell him drugs. He used to buy his drugs from me, and we both sold drugs in two different neighborhoods, and we had a good relationship. He went to prison first. I went to yeah. prison a year later, spent a little time with him, and he came home, and he jumped into this home improvement, and he's just been, like, he was a great person for me to come home and be around, like, and it was just, I learned yeah. with him. I learned with him. I worked with his guys every day, hand in hand, like a fucking ankle monitor hooked to my ankle at lunchtime running around charging it climbing up and down ladders working with these guys and shit just doing what i had to do i was i just i just you know i'm, I'm working i just didn't want to go yeah. back to prison <laughs> yeah so so what um you got locked up for selling coke you told me yeah and when uh how when did you get out so i got out in 2000 and i went to the halfway house at the end of 2013 and i was released from everything in february 2014 so right. and then then you went to work were you working in the halfway house you were working for your buddy yeah i was working and i then, was in the halfway house i was working i was like coming out to go to work every day and then i come back in yeah. and lock in at night so i went and i okay. worked with, with with him um I, um and i just every day i didn't know what honestly i didn't know what the fuck i was gonna do man i didn't mm -hmm. i just know what that was, yeah. go ahead go ahead what what was the story rolling through your brain when you knew you were going to get out and you just said, I didn't know what I was going to do. Like, what's the story you're telling yourself around being a felon, right? Like what's, what, what's rolling around there? So, so for me, so I did, I did about eight years in federal prison and, um, I was, oh, when I first went in there, I was still coming back to sell drugs. I was like, fuck them. I'm coming back to get me some more money. Like I made money. I was, I was good at it. I had some money. I knew what the hell I was doing. But I was like the whole time. I'm like, when he left, when my friend left prison, he was like, what are you going to do? And I said, what are you going to do when you come home? And I said, you know what the fuck I'm going to do when I come home. Hmm. He's like, I'm going to go home. I'm going to start this construct. He knew he, he came from a construction background. So he's like, yeah. I'm just going to go home and I'm going to work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this construction thing and see how it works. And then, I always, I always spoke to him even while I was in prison. He was like, I'm doing real good. You know, I'm, I'm, it, it's, it, he did a lot. Of, he does investor work. So he's like, I'm doing good. He's fucking making money, changed his life around. He's like, it's just a lot of shit, man. You just gotta, you, it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot that comes with it. You gotta, you gotta change who the hell you're around. Like he was the one that, that made me see some things different. Like but yeah. before I came home five years in, I was always coming back to sell drugs. So you what know? was the shift? Like, what, what was that aha moment, if you want to call it that, where you're like, I ain't doing this shit anymore? So I had a celly, right? And my celly, his name was Tony. He was from Detroit. So what, what's a celly? So, uh, uh, he was, we were all in the same, like, we were in the same room together. So it was like oh, four cellmate. of us. A, a cellmate. cellmate. Yeah. I thought you said yeah. a celly. I'm sorry. That's I what I said. That was the, that's, what we, okay. that's what we called it, a celly. What you call it a celly? Okay. Yeah. So it's your cellmate. All yeah. Right. So, so. So we was, he was, he was 47 years old. Now I'm about, I'm about six years in at this point in time. And he was 47 years old and he was on his second bit. He was on the second uh, uh, prison, prison sentence. So he was, it was like, he started telling me his story. And, and like 1993, he went to prison. He got a five year prison sentence. And you do a five year prison sentence if you don't have a record or anything like that with the feds and you end up doing about with the drug program, you do a little over three years. So sure. he did that. Right. And then he went right back home and he wasn't home. He came right back home and he was selling drugs again. And he didn't make it two years before he caught another prison sentence and he took him to trial and he got fucking 30 years. And so he just did three hmm. years. And then he got sentenced to another 30 years. He 10 X that fucking sentence right there, man. Yeah. Right there. Wow. But, Cause the federal system is a, it's tricky as shit. If you don't know any better, you just, it, you just see a lot of fucked up shit. And if you're like one of them career criminals that you, you know, it's different with the state and with the fed, the feds is going to be an easier sentence, but it's going to be a lot longer time. You know, it's mm. going to be more laid back. It's not going to be too much crazy shit going on in certain situations, depending on your record. But it can go, it can go either way, but it was like, he, 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 he did that time. He was doing that time. He ended up, ended up appealing some stuff, getting like 25 years. So he was 17 years on like a 25 or 24 year sentence. Mm. And I was like, man, this is my first fucking conviction. 
they gave me 10 years on my first conviction. I didn't have a criminal record. Um, mm. And I was like, if I get caught again, like he got caught again, like they'll double my time. And I'm like, I'm going to come home at fucking 38 years old. I was like, man, I'm not fucking trying. I'm too old to be trying to catch me another prison. So fuck that. No, I don't want to do that. And I'm working on the, I'm working in the kitchen for $30 a month. Like to being able to, 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 I could do what the fuck I wanted to do. Like the whole time when I was like in my twenties, I went to prison at 30. So in my whole twenties, I was doing what the fuck I wanted to do. I had money. I, it, you can only spend the cash, but so much. And you don't trust anybody to, to do anything, right? You don't, yeah. you don't know what to do. You don't know who to trust. You don't, you don't want to just give money away, you know, but you, you, you can only do so much with cash, but I could do what I wanted to anyway. I, and then they take everything from your ass. And now I'm working in the fucking kitchen, stealing fucking chicken to fucking come back and eat good. Like, mm -hmm. it's for $30 a month. It's a very fucking humbling experience. Like, I never treated anybody fucked up. I was not a fucked up guy. Yeah. So, but just to be able to have that shit snatched out from under you and just be like, this is how your life can turn around. Like, mm -hmm. like you know, I see motherfuckers raking rocks in fucking Arizona. I'm like, like I mean, in, in Texas. Like, they're raking rocks. It's a fucking track full of fucking dirt and rocks. And they're walking around the track with a fucking, for $5 a month. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that. Fuck that. Yeah. And then I, 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 they tell you when to eat. They, 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 you can't do nothing. Then you got to yeah. do what they tell you to do. You got to eat when they tell you to eat. They give you a mm -hmm. fucking Christmas bag at the end of the fucking year for, for a fucking Christmas bag. Like, Merry Christmas. Fuck that bag, yeah. man. Like, I don't want that how, bag. How, how old are you now? <laughs> I'm 47. I just turned 47. So you're 47. You know me. I'm like one of these number guys, right, man? I'm sitting mm -hmm. here. I'm playing with my calculator here. I'm like, eight years is like a little over 2,900 days. <laughs> it's a little over 70,000 hours. And it's, you, you're, you're 47? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said 47. So to, as of today, you spent 17% of your life locked up. Like, no wonder, like, I'm just sitting here, like, you know, we, I'm just going to call it, man. Some people come into battleground and they're like, they half ass it. And, and I feel like just hearing this, like, it almost seems like you're, you're going, man, I got one fucking life. And I need to step on the gas and I'm attacking every day. Pound that, pound the rock, man. Like we talk about, right? Like, is that, and like, when you think of that, like 17% of your life. Now, the older you get, the good news is that number goes down. <laughs> 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 All right. But like, you, you know, it's, I mean, when you hear it's been 17% of your life, 70,000 hours, what goes through your mind, man? So it's, it's, so for, for me, from what I think, from, from how you're putting it, your perspective, it's, it was more than that because I, I felt like I wasted, like I got to, I got to match the gas now because I feel like I wasted so much time because even before I went to prison, I was doing fucked up shit. So I had a fucked up mentality mm -hmm. and I was doing like, I was doing the, the negative shit that geared me up towards that. So it's like when I came home from prison and I started changing things around, I had to think of all of that negative shit, that the things that I would handle the wrong way, according to like society and, and actually mm -hmm. like things that we did that were the wrong way, like bad habits, shit that led up to it. Like, I'm like, I learned like at the shit I was doing at 18 years old, if I was 17 or 16 years old, when I was getting in trouble as a fucking kid, if I would have been doing the right shit, it would have been like, cause I feel like I started my life over came home from prison so yeah. I start from scratch yeah right? like, how, know, how did you get into it how'd you get um, into it i don't like i, I, I like I, I worked as a as a kid like at, i had a paper route at fucking 12 years old you know i worked mm -hmm. at 14 my mother made sure that i got a job you know i was raised my mother, i was raised by a single mother you know she it was me and my brother and she fucking bust her ass, you know. I watched her hustle every day. She moved us out of the state. We used to live in Rhode Island. I was born in Rhode Island, and then we moved towards the Baltimore area. So she got us the hell away from there because it was nothing going on there. She, she just got us away. We, 
And I was always bad. I was always a fucking bad kid, even when I was there. Me and my brother, we were two little bad motherfuckers. I was always starting shit, breaking shit, and then, you know, 14, my mother made me work, so, you know, worked. Yeah. Worked at 15, worked at 16, like, always worked. But I'm like, man, this shit ain't fucking working. I'm like, I can't even fucking buy nothing. Like, minimum wage was $5 an hour. And I'm a yeah. kid, and I want to fucking drive and shit like that. And then I just, you know, getting around the wrong people and doing the wrong shit and seeing opportunities and just one thing led to another. And next thing you know, I'm selling a shitload of fucking coke. So, I mean, it was. What would you, it, what would you make? Like, what would you make in a day or week, month, whatever? Like, so when it was home was, along? I mean, sometimes 100 grand a week, you know? So, mm -hmm. but, it, you know, you, you got to take a bunch of shit that comes with it. Because I might make 100 grand a week for four weeks straight. And then somebody might get locked up, and then I got to take a loss on whatever they took a loss on. Then I got to get them out of jail so they don't tell them. Well, I'm going to get them out of jail anyway because it's the right thing to do. But you got to get them out of jail. Then you got to make sure they got a lawyer. And you so you're like care bailing of guys out and shit like that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm bailing like them that. out. I'm making sure that they yeah. got a lawyer. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm making sure, like, I'm a good dude. Like, even though I was doing fucked up shit. I was a good guy. So just like any business, you had fucking expenses. <laughs> yeah, same shit. So it's like, yeah, it's yeah. it's like when I sit back and I and I and I tell myself that I should be further ahead than I am in life. I sit back and I think of the time and the lessons that I had learned in prison, doing selling drugs and shit, just coming up in the drug game, like shit that happened. If I would have took that same, it's that same thing that got me to that level where I could make hundred grand in a week. It's like. Mm -hmm. That amount of time and that amount of hustle, if I put it into a regular business, it's going to do the same thing. Yeah, it's going it's to yeah. do the same thing. I'm, so, I'm changing. I'm, I'm cha I changed from a, from drugs to construction. It's the same. I'm the same person. These are my characteristics. I'm going to take care of people. I'm going to treat my guys right. I'm going to make sure I'm doing the right shit. I got some integrity. So, all right. I got, uh, I got three main questions I want to ask here that I've been formulating mm -hmm. as you're talking, man. One of them, I'm going to start with the fucked up one. Can I ask you a fucked up one? Sure. It, it, and it's, it's, it's not that fucked up, but it's what, what's the, what, what are one or more? I don't know how many, if any, I'm sure there's something. Um, see, I'm working this through in my head right now. So, um, what's one skill that you learned as a drug dealer that's benefiting you in your business now? You standing behind my product. Like it's the same mm -hmm. thing. If I do something and I fuck your job up, my integrity is going to like, I'm coming to fix it. I'm mm -hmm. coming to do the right thing. Even if I take a loss, I'm going to always do the right thing. Same thing. If I sold you something that was fucked up in the streets, bring that shit back. Because mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it back. I had, a, I had good quality product at a great fucking, at a, at a high price. There was a lot of shit that came with me. I gave you a good experience. You had a good experience with me. You didn't have to worry about going to jail and not me coming out to get you out of jail. You didn't have to worry about me because I knew how to move and I knew how to do business. You don't have to worry about getting locked up fucking with me from somebody following me. It's not nothing I did. Yeah. I'm moving the right way. Standing behind my shit. Yeah. I'm giving them a so good experience. You know, you know what's funny about this? It, it's like this crazy paradox. Now, I want to be very clear here. I know Tony of today, right? Mm -hmm. I know who you are. You're, you're a solid motherfucker, okay? Like, so let me just get that out of the way. Because what I'm about mm -hmm. to say could sound like it, you're not. But I know you are. I know, I know you. I see how you show up. You've been around our community for a long time and stuff like that. But it's funny, like on one side, it's like you're talking about integrity. And on the other side, you're like breaking the law, right? Like it's this crazy. It's, I could be that yeah. good. I could be that good at something so bad. Why the fuck can't I turn it around and, and double it up and do good and, and switch the whole thing up? It makes it easier for me. It was just a lot of shit that I didn't fucking know about running the business. Well, and here's the other thing. This is funny, man. At the top of this, you're like two things I say all the time. One of them is build your brand. You were building your brand, yeah. even though you were breaking the fucking law and all that other shit. So even back then, before you probably even knew what it was, it was your reputation. And that's really what your brand is. You're building yep. your reputation. 
You know, like don't buy shit from him. He's a fucking idiot. You know, yeah. he doesn't stand. He's gonna nothing. fucking get you. He's gonna get you locked yeah. up. Is this there's gonna be some bullshit following him? No, not with me. Mm-hmm. And I was good at that. Yeah. So it, you see how easy it is for the transition. I just had to build that reputation, and that's what I've been working on. You know. Yeah. Um. Next question I have. We we kind of answered the two that I had all in one there, so I don't have to ask the second one. <laughs> the, the, the other one I wanted to ask was. Um, what do you tell someone right now who's listening to this, who fuck something up in their past, they can't shake it off? You know, what's, you know, what's your message for somebody like that, man? So you, you, one thing about that, one thing that that I, I hear you say all the time is if you fucking... If you don't have the balls to do certain shit, close your fucking business down and go fucking work for somebody. That shit resonates mm-hmm. with me. It digs me every time. It makes me dig a little bit fucking deeper because I already know that I deserve this shit. And it's like, you got to push past your past. It doesn't make a difference if you was fucking using drugs or fucking selling drugs. You know, as long as you wasn't fucking touching no little kids, that's a fucking other fucking story. But... You yeah. you ain't using drugs. You fucking selling drugs. No matter what the fuck it is, you got to get the fuck up. You can't do this shit if you ain't resilient. You got to have some tough motherfucking skin, and you 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 got to have some balls. You got to get the fuck up, and you got to do it. You got mm-hmm. to you got to change your people, places, and things. You got to get these motherfuckers away from you. You got to get time to yourself. It's like it's you you have to fight. Stand the fuck up. You got to be resilient. I've seen it so much. Between my brother, my brother got high, my dad got high. You got to be resilient. My brother's seven years clean. He's in the fucking sheet metal union. Changed his whole fucking life around. Doesn't make a difference. Mm-hmm. Fucking turn your shit around. You're bullshitting yourself. If you, if you ain't turning around and you ain't turning it the fuck up, then you're bullshitting with yourself. I see so many recovering addicts coming, cleaning the fuck up, and they've been building their fucking businesses and they're hustling. They're like, just get the fuck up, man. You, you got to push. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, I think a lot of it comes back to, um, you know, everyone working through their own shit and get to a point where they can forgive themselves. Yes. And you got to be able to accept who you really are. See, some people can't let go of that shit. That's a big problem. And that's how you get. If I didn't go to prison, then I, I would have probably died in the streets. There's only two ways it's going. You know, you mm-hmm. got to, you, you, you have to change. You, you got to be, you, you got to get past and get, Get to know yourself. Like, you really got to get to know yourself and, and, and take, and that's prison opened my eyes to that. So I got to know myself and know what the fuck I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to go back to prison. I didn't want to be raking them fucking rocks for $5 a month. You know, you got to push past it. Mm-hmm. You got to. What, what, did, uh, what would you say you learned the most about yourself? Like, that, like, I really know that no matter what, I'm a good fucking person. Like, I'm a good person. I do the right shit. When nobody's looking, I do the right shit. Not when everybody's looking. And I don't look for fucking recognition for this shit. I do it because that's just the person I am. And that's the type of person mm-hmm. I've always been. I've taken care of the people that have been around me. I don't fucking look at nobody different. Race, color, age. I don't give a shit what our differences are. Like, you... you I don't know, man. It's it's a lot, man. It's a lot. Just it's a lot. Just dealing with life, everything in general. It, it's interesting that you said. I learned that I'm a good person. You you were able to separate your identity from the choices you made, right? Now, truly, at the end of the day, we are what we do, mm-hmm. ultimately. But you were you were in the shadows there for a few years doing that shit. But but deep down, you know. You're a good dude. And I, I believe that most people, I really believe this with all my heart and it gets me into trouble sometimes because it, I, I can find a reason to like anybody and trust anybody. Cause I just, I'm an, I'm very optimistic with humanity. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's a lot of people like that who, for whatever reason, they've made certain choices and who they really are, the good person they are, the talent they have, the potential they have, all those things get buried in all those bad choices, you know? 
And sometimes it takes something like, you know, for me, going bankrupt, looking back now, was actually one of the best things that ever happened to me. It fucking sucked in the, in the midst of it. Same you know, thing with it, Same thing with prison. Best thing that fucking happened to me. I, I really feel everything happens for a reason. That was the best thing that happened to me. I got in trouble. That's why I went to fucking Texas and I met my seller. I got in trouble for a reason. So I can go there and meet his ass. So he could change my shit around. He can make me look at shit different. Be like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not going to do that shit unless I absolutely have to. And it's not fucking worth it. I'm not fucking doing it. Wow. What else? Or what else do you want us to know? Or what should I should I have asked you that I didn't ask you? Nothing, man. My, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here. To, I, I'm just a messenger. That's it. I'm the messenger for the right set of ears. You were the messenger for me. That motherfucking Steve Chinholster is a messenger for me. You know, that's my guy. You know, this group is a great fucking place to be. To let you know you're not alone, man. We all go through some shit. Everybody's different. Everybody goes through some shit. But everybody that's here that's fucking making the difference is resilient as a motherfucker. And they're here. Everybody in this community is here for each other. Shit is dope. Dude, I was out, I was out for, um, you know, one of my workouts, I, I do these vest walks and stuff. And, um, and this, uh, no, it was yesterday's walk. It wasn't this morning. It was yesterday. I, I was just walking. I didn't have any earbuds in or anything. And, um, and I'm going to brag on the community here just a little bit. Like I was like, I was thinking about you because in the private group, man, in battleground, you see, you know, you tell things about your story. You see people talking about going through cancer, you know, mental health issues with a family member or themselves and just the amount of vulnerability in the group and how the community of several hundred people in this community, it's like, you know, I told Neil last night on the phone, I, I said, dude, I think this is like the safest place on earth. I, like where you could just be you and here I am and there's no judgment. And anyway, on my walk yesterday, I was just having this moment, like how the fuck did this happen? You know what I mean? Like it, it's just, it was one of those pinch me proud dad moments, right? You know, I started this thing many years ago and it, you know, just the right people in, in at the right times as it influences on me. And then, you know, our other coaches and partners and members and this and that it's just really remarkable to me how it's um you know how it's come together and you know we always talk about success as an inside out game you gotta you gotta work on you and then everything else outside of you takes care of itself and your business your life and all that other shit and so I know everybody who runs a program like this and shit like brags about it's the best in the world and this and that I'm sitting here just like with an enormous amount of gratitude for how people like you choose to show up and, um, and give to each other in the group and have each other's back, man. So I just wanted to thank you for that. Cause I know you're in there all the time and you're encouraging people and, uh, and shit. I don't even, you know, there's even, there's a shit ton of things that go on even outside of the, the membership site and Facebook and shit, right? Like there's other conversations that you guys have with each other and, Shit, um, I went to Steve's house. Yeah. I went to Steve. Yeah. I went to Steve's house. That was fucking. Well, he's he's, just, he's just down the road from yeah, me. That was easy so for me. It was an easy yeah. ride for me. It was an easy ride for me. And I, yeah, I, like that, I, that was I went. That I was went. The and hike I, that you had right. You guys yeah, went on. That, everybody was fucking down. It's, this is this is a fucking support group. That's really what the fuck it is for contractors. That's it. Everybody's yeah. dealing with something. You know, you just a messenger though, Tom. You just a yeah. messenger. You just delivered the message. That's it. Well, you it's put, it, it. You know, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, you guys, you guys put you guys put this shit together. You know, mm-hmm. it's different because you're moving behind the purpose. That's the that shit is different. You got a good purpose. It's like, and you ain't doing nothing but being a fucking good dude. That's it. Mm-hmm. Same shit. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's. You know, you talked about how prison best thing that happened to you. I talked about the bankruptcy. If I even trace it back to, you know, my um, you know my short bus days, literal, for those that had never heard the story that are, are new listeners here or whatever, you know, I, I literally rode this short bus and was in special ed for two years. Uh, parents were divorced when I was six months old. 
Uh, I shared a story in Battleground where I was literally weeping on the call talking about I had this breakthrough with Yoda, who's one of our mindset coach. He lives here uh, in Colorado with me and coaches me on some things and helps me work through some of my shit. And where I realized, you know, basically my, my dad drove me to a fight with a kid and I got my ass kicked and that fuck it, like my, it just set this, um, it just fucked me up. We'll just call it that way. Right. Not just the physical beating, but the, and I had like this breakthrough and I'm like crying on the call and all this other shit. And, um, which wasn't planned, <laughs> and, uh, but I'm, my point here is for those that are, um, that have a fucked up past, whether shit was done to you, whether you, it was friendly fire, you did it to yourself, bad choices, whatever this it's, it forms you and that can be a strength, right? Like it, it, it makes you more relatable to people you're going to connect with people that, I mean, dude, you connect with dudes that I'll never connect with, you know, just because of your past. And I think that's the beauty of adversity and the hardships. I mean, even Tony Robbins talks about, you know, he had a rough upbringing and shit like that. And he's like that, that fucking happened for me. Like if that shit didn't happen, he wouldn't be changing millions of lives, you know? And, um, and so for those that have, that are just in the gutter mentally and stuff, guys, I want to encourage you to, you know, um, try to reframe that, you know, uh, um, Ed Milet, you know, has always said things like, you know, life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you, you know, and, um, yeah, it, it always sucks in the, in the, in the moment, you know, but when you get past it, you can look back and you can learn lessons about yourself and, and, you know, and, choices you made and you can use that as fuel to grow and get better and have a bigger impact in, in your part of the world. So, well, dude, I appreciate you hanging here today, man. Um, if somebody wants to know more about you, um, maybe they want to come sub for you or work for you or something like that. Uh, where do they find you? Uh, all things remodeling MD on Facebook and also on Instagram. They can find us. Be able to get in got touch it, with us. All things remodeling. Yep. Baltimore. Yep. Right? Yep. You, you in Baltimore? Or no, I'm outside of Baltimore. Okay. I'm, I'm Mark. I, I, I don't learn how to build my brand now. I'm going to where yeah. I know where the money's at. You know, <laughs> I started that. I've been, and I started this a couple of years ago when I first joined the group. Yeah. I said, all right, yeah. these are, I listened to you guys. And I said, this is where I want to go and this is where I want to go. And I'm on my hey, way. Hey, uh, do you know why bank robbers rob banks? Why? Because that's where the money is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thank you, Tom. You got it, Tony. Appreciate you, buddy. Guys, give us a rating. Give us a review. Share this with somebody that needs it. And uh, if you want to learn more about what we go, got going on, just go to thecontractorfight.com forward slash battleground. And we will see you guys next time on the Contractor Fight Podcast. I'm out. I'm out.